This is Twit. Well, folks, it's now time for the bites. And this one's an interesting one because we, we've talked about password list worlds in the past. But things are not moving forward that quickly. Maybe this just will. Jeebert? Okay, so let's go back a little bit. We've all started hearing about you know, different systems to try and make our logins more secure. So that whole bit where you log in, you give it a password, and then it sends you back a, say, six-digit code um, to your phone, and then you go from that. Well, there's a problem with that. That password's still there. And what people can do is, you know, the bad guys can go and try that password to see if you've reused it on other sites. So that's a problem. Now, what's happening with the story, this is an Ars Technica story, and thank you very much to them, is they're talking about Microsoft. Now, this is available or has been available in Windows 10 and some of the new Microsoft accounts. And the idea is instead Instead of using a password and then a counter password, let's call it that, um, they're now saying we're going to use the authenticator system and it's like it's rolling a brand new password each and every time you use it. Kind of cool. Now, I'm going to call on Lou only because he's been the guinea pig for this at Microsoft for God knows how long. Uh, I've seen various versions of it all over the place. They, I saw the Microsoft folks using uh, smart cards, you know, those little chip cards, and you have to stick it in to a reader in order to log in. And then that spawned a whole bunch of, you know, keyboards from Cherry that had the special slots. HP had them also. And then now, you know, laptops started having those slots. But it's getting better. And so... Lou has direct experience with the Microsoft Authenticator app. I use Duo. Um, there are many, many out there. And so, Lou, what, what's the state of the art now? What's Microsoft having you use? And do you still have passwords? Or can we truly go passwordless now? So without giving up too much here, you know, think about that. I don't want to give up too much secrets of security, right, to a big tech giant. Of but what course. I will say, uh, uh, I will say, I'll give a theoretical solution here because I do, I do work with a lot of organizations who are implementing this specifically. Um, and what I can tell you is it, it is possible to almost go completely pass passwordless. Like, it, it, in fact, I think it is possible. In fact, I've known organizations that don't have never, have not typed in their password since they started using this mechanism. Um, the, the, the authenticator, think about this. You connect from a remote location to a remote jump box. You can do that by using the authenticator, uh, showing your presence and also showing your identity by using biometrics of some kind, whether it's a, a fingerprint or, or your face. Uh, authenticating you. And then also they, they give you a test in there. They ask you a question of some kind that you are displayed on the screen and you have to answer on the authenticator, uh, which so you have multi-factor going on inside there. Then once you're in the jump box, you also don't have to log in because again, you get that same kind of um, a federation capability as well as using the authenticator. And so you're able to have a zero trust environment, but also you never ever have to enter a password. And you're using hardware that you is readily available that's made to be secure, whether it's your your iOS device or it's um, another device of some kind that handles the authentication. So it, it does remove those walls that require passwords. And so, um, you know, sometimes, um, you know, that will make it so that users are, it's easier for authentication to go around multiple times. Like for instance, if I'm using a, let's say a SharePoint site that has some data on there that, that has, uh, that's very secure, they can enforce another authentication cycle with your device because it's that easy. You don't, people don't have to type anything uh, and they can guarantee that it's the user. Um, and so it's, it's a pretty interesting model and I've, I've seen it be very successful. And if you add additional um, factors into it, like for instance, identifying presence is another one. Um, you know, you can, you all could also use other devices like YubiKeys and other things that also help with that. Um, and then, you know, then you enforce it using, you know, secure VMs and you add more and more layers into the system. 
and you have a very secure and zero trust environment. So I think this this could be the start of a new, I'd say to me, a new revolution. And I've seen it, like I said, I've seen it in organizations I work with uh, uh, implement this successfully. Yeah, I've actually seen it too. Um, it's pretty obvious I've done a pretty decent amount of work with the US military and other countries' militaries. And obviously you wanna protect the crown jewels. So one of the things that we used to have or in one iteration is I'd go and stick in my smart card and then give it a something. So it's something you have and something you know. Pretty cool stuff. Um, it's something that needs to happen. Now, I'm going to change gears a little bit and ask this of Kurt. Kurt, you've been talking to various folks in your role as a analyst. Do you think we're going to get pushback? Is, is the world ready for this, for something that's more sophisticated? Is the world ready to get rid of passwords? Well, you're, you're sort of asking two questions there, and I, I do want to break it down. Is the world ready to get rid of passwords? I think much of the world would love to be rid of passwords. Uh, passwords are the classic example of a two-edged sword. On the one hand, they do provide a legitimate factor in authentication, something you know. On the other hand, they are the most easily guessed and most frequently exploited factor of authentication. So their security is suspect at best. The next question is the one that's really important, and that is, are we ready to, to replace them? And while I think that the, the factor that Microsoft has gone to is a major step, a, a legitimate question can be asked about how much security is improved if we replace one factor with another. You know, let's not forget that if you use something like Microsoft Authenticator or Okta or um, even something like a YubiKey and don't use a password, you still don't have two-factor authentication. You've simply replaced one factor with another. Now, there are some of these that have been shown to be theoretically vulnerable. Others, there's a question about things like recovery of accounts if there is a lost factor. So I think that this is a solid step in the right direction, and I believe we will ultimately move toward passwordless. But for the time being, I think more companies are going to use things like Microsoft Authenticator as an additional factor rather than a replacement factor for passwords. You know, this, this is one of those topics that is going to go on and on and on and on. You know, it, and it's going to start, I think, become even more important as we start getting more and more into a cashless society. You know, people are starting to use, uh, like, for instance, Apple Cash on their phones a lot more. I'm, I was right behind a gentleman um, that used his iPhone to pop up his credit card to pay at the Target as I was doing my checkout. But here's the issue that I'm having. He was busy juggling things around and pulling his mask down so that he could do face ID. And is this something that we might actually see? You know, okay, I have some older friends. Face ID and touch ID absolutely baffles them. But yet those are some of the least egregious uh, ways of getting biometrics going. You know, there's a lot of folks that are talking about, gee, we have fingerprint ID or face ID on both the Android and the i platforms. Is it time for us to move forward? So I'm going to throw this back at Lou just because and says, what's your experience? Has, is Microsoft ready to have both a, say, a smart card or something like that, along with biometrics? stored 
in something like Active Directory? Is it is the system, is the platform ready? And mostly, is it ready to cross platforms? Is the federation uh, piece there yet? So let's unpack that for a second. Are they ready to store additional pieces of um, of of encrypted data that identifies the user? I would say yes. They do have that capability. Um, the key here is. You know, there's lots of other mechanisms. Obviously, there's Windows Hello. There's other versions of biometrics here, but again, they're some of they're very similar. Now, you go back to we talked about a couple of weeks ago about um, driver's licenses being stored on Apple phones because of their new secure digital enclave that's on them, and and how the TSA is going to start doing that. Could that be a thing where now your device is also a smart card? Um, and I think a lot of these systems, like Kurt was saying, you know, m both Microsoft as well as Okta and other um, identity providers and identity systems and services have the capability to institute additional factors that have additional pieces of authentication within them. And I think that's what's so great about these systems is organizations can customize it in whatever way they want. If they have, if they want to pay the money for additional secure factors, they can do that. Um, now the authenticator mechanism, it's, you know, Microsoft authenticator is free. Um, it's similar with a lot of these other ones that are out there. I know LastPass has one, like you said, Duo has one. Um, now the systems that, that utilize them, sometimes they're not free, but again, same sense, they do offer customization per organization and policy per organization. Um, so, you know, is there a capability to scale this out? I definitely say there, there is. Um, is there room for newer technology to reduce that bar, that barrier of having to use things like face uh, and, and fingerprint? I think so. Um, you know, but again, same sense. If you think about it, if you had it on your phone, you'd still have to tell the phone, provide presence of you being with your phone in order to release the uh, the the token of some kind to the third party system for that factor. And so, um, you know, there has to be some way of releasing that. Um, whether it again be a, a fingerprint, a photo, a voice, uh, an audio clip, um, you know, something um, in order to do that. So, yeah, I, I think there's still kind of a, a ways to go to make this a little simpler. But in the same sense, I think it's getting there. Yeah. And we, I, I have had the dream of being able to have my front door welcome me saying, hello, Mr. Chi and open up for me you know we're not there yet and i'm not sure i trust it yet but i think this might be a pretty good way of moving in that direction you know make the world do something that's more secure than passwords Let, let's get beyond passwords i think is the bottom line and you know what yep. this is going to be a topic we're going to be talking about for years on end